have your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go ahead and start, and I want to make a couple announcements before the kiddos get started with the program. Um, this year, we are not going to take a break. So teachers, if you need to take your kids out for a break, please feel free to do so. All that we ask is that you wait until whoever is speaking is done. That's And it's fine. They understand about the coming and going. I was trying to remember how many years this is, and I had no idea. It's been a long time. The kids have done um, some remarkable people through the years, and we have some very interesting characters to share with you. Anna? Welcome to our 2011 Living History. <coughs> This extravagant ruler was considered by some the Queen of Kings and by others a seductress. She was one of the few queens of the Hellenistic period to rule for an extended period of time without a husband. By using two important Roman leaders, Caesar and Antonis, she attained her goal of protecting Egypt. Along the way, she reclaimed land lost by previous rulers. I am pleased to present one of the most famous Egyptian rulers of all time. Cleopatra. Hello, and thank you for having me here today. I became Queen of Egypt during a time when Rome had very much power over our country. And considering they were the major world power of the time, at any point they could simply barge into Egypt and pretty much take over. My father created a great debt to Egypt and the Romans would do anything to get our wealth. To, do, to, fi to secure Egypt's independence, I had to find an ally in, in Rome. To do this, I had to begin a relationship with one of the leaders of Rome. Caesar was, a, Caesar was the leader at this time, and I began my relationship with him as soon as possible, and this continued until 44 BC at which point he was murdered. At this point, my, my position in Rome was insecure at best. He was a popular ruler, and I was generally associated with his, with his murder. I needed to find another ruler. There were three successors who split up the kingdom. Antonius was one of them. He called, he called me to help, him with, to help him find one of his military expeditions. I was the only ruler who had the wealth to fund this. I did not come immediately so that I could enter, enter as extravagantly as possible. My barge had silver oars, a purple canopy, and an orchestra on deck. My, the word of my arrival spread quickly ahead of me. I began my relationship with him and secured, Egypt for, and secured Egypt's independence for longer. When he began his campaign, there were several battles that went very well, and for this I became more popular. But after that, he suffered some serious losses, and my position began to be insecure again. There was then a civil war between Rome, between two of the successors of Caesar began, and I failed to secure Egypt during this. Until then, my allies in Rome had helped me secure the independence of Egypt for longer than could have been expected. Thank you. Thank you very much for that inspiring speech. I would now like to ask you a couple of questions. Why were you hiding in a tomb during the war between you, your second husband and <coughs> Octavian? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. I, I felt that it was necessary to protect myself during this since the war had come to Egypt, and I did not want to be captured, so I hid. Now we will open up questions to the audience. You right there. When did your husband die? Um, well, I wasn't actually married to them. But, uh, <laughs> but um, Caesar died in 44 BC and Antonius died in 30 BC. Uh, Claire in the back. I've heard that you were actually married to your younger brother a couple of times, and I was wondering if that was true or not. 
Um, yeah, that was a tradition of the Ptolemaic dynasty in Egypt to for the siblings to be married, but it wasn't. It was sort of just a tradition to make it official. Mrs. Briggs. Oh, were you associated with both of your husband's or lovers' deaths? Um, yeah. I <laughs> have um, a question for you. Our society today tends to picture you as a great beauty, and they sometimes we sometimes ignore your intelligence and your cunning. Which of those characteristics do you think was actually more um, important to you in your reign? My beauty was not necessarily that important, but um, persuasion was mainly what helped. I spoke nine different languages at least, and that helped because I could address people in their own language. Uh, Madison? Okay. After Caesar was um, murdered, why did you flee to Egypt after you finally got your throne back? Um, well, after he was killed, a lot of, he was a very popular ruler, and a lot of people felt that it was my fault because I wasn't very popular in Rome. Uh, Kristen? I did. I had four children. Uh, Avery? Why was he so Because um, a lot of people felt that he was, he was getting very power hungry. He was named dictator for life, which usually only was reserved for times of emergency. But... <laughs> He convinced everyone to grant him the title anyway. Uh, you right there. Oh, when did he die? I'm sorry, we're gonna move on to a different question. Uh, would you like to ask? <laughs> uh, why do you have strange clothes? Because I was rich and I wanted the world to know it. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks, but that's all the time we have. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is my favorite part of the program. I'm not sure it's theirs, but we're going to open it up, and we are going to encourage you to ask questions of any of our characters up here. So we'll open it up to the audience. Yes. Brennan? Um, for Emily Dickinson. Emily? Um, I heard you were with Trump Women's Rights. Would you consider yourself um, a suffrage of women's rights? Would you consider yourself a suffrage? Suffrage of? I can't hear you. The non -famous, the non Yes. 
so many people die on the Titanic? Uh, because there wasn't enough lifeboats on the Titanic. So is that like a safety issue? Like, why didn't they have enough? Was it not? Because uh, they, didn't, they didn't know that the, the ship would sink. Because they the company called the White Star, they bragged about how good the ship was and that it was unsinkable, but they were wrong. <laughs> Just a corrupt institution. They didn't. They were just corrupt. Wait. Um, for Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. Um, were you or were you not president of the Senate when George Washington was One for Cleopatra. How did you die? What were the circumstances of your death? Um, well, the civil war going on in Rome involved me because I was associated with Antonius. So we were losing, and if I hadn't committed suicide, I would have been raided through the streets of Rome like I was a spoil of war, and that would have been humiliating, so I killed myself. How old was your son when you were kidnapped, and do you think his age had any effect on how he felt? You mean my son um, before I was kidnapped? Yeah. Okay, um, he was still just a very small baby, and considering my husband was also killed, um, he probably, I, I can't really answer. Um, I was probably 15 years old. 